in a world where carbs are your enemy, you need one man to help you fight your battles. That man is Jimmy. Combating nutrition, disinformation, and general bull. It's Jimmy Rants. JimmyRants.com. You concerned about what keto will do to your cholesterol? Many people believe eating fat, especially saturated fat, will raise their cholesterol levels and put them at a greater risk for developing heart disease. And doctors reinforce this by making a big deal about high cholesterol requiring a statin medication to lower it. But this is half-century-old thinking. Newer research shows triglycerides on a standard lipid panel are a much better indicator of your current state of heart health. These blood fats are the truly bad cholesterol that are a direct reflection of your carbohydrate intake. Aim for triglycerides under 100. Cut your carbohydrate intake, eat more real food fats, and your heart will be happy and healthy. Simplified short form keto videos found exclusively at ketowhiteboard.info. Watch it, share it, live it. What's up, what's up, you guys? Welcome back to another Instagram Live. And we're here with another episode of Jimmy Ranch. JimmyRanch.com is the website. And as always, if you want to engage in the show live, you got to go follow me over on Instagram. I'm at living low carb man, L I V I N L O W C A R B M A N. Once you're there, you can engage live in the content here on Instagram Live. We also simulcast over here on Facebook Live. So, all my Facebookers, thanks so much for being here, you guys. Appreciate all of the support. If you missed the live on Instagram, uh, you get up to 24 hours to watch it on replay. After that, it does disappear. You'll need to see all the past episodes over on YouTube where I house them. Go type in a keyword, Jimmy Rants, on YouTube. You will find the show. Um, it's also youtube.com slash man. Finally, we have the best of the best moments of this year's show for, in podcast form. It is the Jimmy Rants podcast over on Apple Podcasts as well as Stitcher. All of these links, you guys, are at JimmyRants.com. Today's Jimmy Rants is going to go a little bit hard on the media, and especially the media in Great Britain. So over in the UK, there is this newspaper there called the Daily Mail. If you are British, you probably have referred to the Daily Mail as the Daily Rag. <laughs> they're not very liked in the media there uh, by the people, uh, and yet they're such a major media. Whenever you see some kind of a salacious headline um, uh, about health, it typically is published in the Daily Mail. You'll hear Dr. Will Cole and I often read from Daily Mail uh, articles because they love making those very salacious headlines that make it look like... Uh, a study, for example, is something that is not. Oh, the uh, latest red meat study shows bad news for keto dieters. Death is imminent. You know, and they kind of go down this path of sensationalism. And they did it recently uh, a couple of times with headlines. Statin deniers are putting patients at risk. Uh, and this was published and, and then updated in February and March. Another one, there is a special place in hell for the doctors who claim that statins don't work. So, what I want to talk about here today is the UK newspaper Daily Mail uh, is publishing misleading stories about some key keto leaders. So over in the UK, there is uh, a group of medical people and professionals that have been out there uh, talking about low-carb diets, talking about ketogenic diets, real food-based type of diets, uh, and then also reminding patients that statins are not the be-all, end-all when it comes to cardiovascular health that they've been made out to be. And so the name of the three people 
that were attacked in these two articles I just mentioned to you. Uh, Zoe Harkham, so you know Zoe. Uh, Dr. Malcolm Kendrick, and he's been out there for many years kind of sounding the alarm over the nonsense of cholesterol and worrying about your cholesterol. Uh, in fact, he has a book called The Great Cholesterol Con, if you want to go look up Dr. Malcolm Kendrick's work. And then finally, Dr. Asim Mahaltra. So Asim is a cardiologist, very, very prestigious, well-known, highly respected cardiologist in the UK. And these three people were featured in a prominent story about statin drugs, uh, one of those headlines I just mentioned to you several weeks back. They claimed that these three people in this story, they claimed that they are spreading, quote, deadly propaganda on cholesterol-lowering statin drugs. Uh, the articles Dr. Mahaltra says were inaccurate, misleading, distorted, and defamatory. And there have been a number of respected doctors, including the former chairman uh, of the RCGP, Claire Gerada, and they provided supportive comments, which we'll get to here in a minute. Um, so I wanted to read to you this letter to the editor that Asim Mahaltra and Zoe Harkum and Dr. Malcolm Kendrick have all written, kind of defending themselves. Because guys, whether you realize it or not, the people that are in uh, the alternative nutritional health space right now are highly under attack. I mean, the leading voices in this, especially the ones that are medical voices, they're being called out. That's one of the things I love about the work that I do. I'm not beholden to anybody. It's one reason I've always resisted the urge to get an RD, a PhD, an MD, any kind of D after my name, because as empowered patient Jimmy Moore, I can speak out and share with you about this kind of stuff without any fear of uh, them coming after me. They will try, but try, try they may. They can't shut this mouth up. All right, so they wrote a letter to the editor of the Sunday, uh, and his name is Ted Verity, ted.verity at mailonsunday.co.uk, and here is what they wrote. To whom it may concern, Complaints regarding the two articles published by the Mail on Sunday, and I mentioned them earlier, statin deniers putting patients at risk, and there is a special place in hell for the doctors who claim statins don't work. Uh, I set out here the details of my complaint and concerns with this recent Mail on Sunday publication and the two articles therein and mentioned above, printed on paper and also published online. It is my firm belief that they have breached the editorial code of conduct, uh, conduct as set out by the IPSO. I request that these uh, organizations take immediate steps to address this position. In particular, I expect a full and thorough review of both articles by the IPSO within the purview of its position as the independent press regulator. So in other words, Dr. Mahaltra is asking, look, they got basic facts wrong uh, about how they depicted us in this story. And if you're just joining us, we're reading uh, a, re a letter to the editor of the Daily Mail. This is a big, big newspaper, guys, over in the UK. And they've done two recent stories all about uh, statin deniers, so to speak. So statin drugs are cholesterol-lowering medications, and these uh, doctors and key uh, keto leaders over there in the UK are speaking out about the overprescription of statin medications as a means of lowering cholesterol and by extension of that, lowering heart disease, okay? Uh, so Dr. Mahaltra says, I am a qualified, respected member of the medical community. I currently practice as an NHS cardiologist in a respected teaching hospital, as well as producing peer-reviewed papers regarding statin research and other medications Focusing on thorough, independent, and scientifically proven research is an area of specialty for me, and especially how information is conveyed to patients in an ethical and transparent manner. I'm recognized worldwide as a specialist, evidenced by appointment as a visiting professor of evidence-based medicine in Brazil. 
The articles that the Daily Mail published are misleading, distorted, incorrect, and defamatory. Both contain inaccuracies, a failure to distinguish between comment, conjecture, and fact, and distortion of the truth of both of my published peer-reviewed research as well as my medically qualified position on statin medications along with Zoe Harcum and Dr. Malcolm Kendrick. So, his complaint, you guys, focuses in on the following rules, that the press must take care not to publish anything that is inaccurate, misleading, or distorted information or images, including headlines that are not supported by the text. The press, while free to editorialize and campaign, must distinguish clearly when they are commenting, conjecture, and then also listing fact. And so one of the statements that they put in their article was that Dr. Malcolm Kendrick, Dr. Zoe Harcum, and Dr. Asim Mahaltra are all statin deniers. So contrary to the sub-rule, this statement is clearly inaccurate. I have prescribed and managed thousands of patients who take statins, continue to do so in the NHS, and I am clearly not a statin denier. This is Dr. Mahaltra speaking. I have published exclusively or extensively on prescription of statins on both absolute individual benefit and the potential harms in a number of peer-reviewed medical journals. So as much as we know about statin medications being over-prescribed, there is a right patient for them. And as a cardiologist, Dr. Mahalter realizes this, knowing that there are certain circumstances where a statin medication could be beneficial. In general, they're probably not great for the vast majority of people that are prescribed them. But in specificity, they're claiming in the article that Dr. Mahaltra and Dr. Harcum and Dr. Kendrick all deny any patient from ever being able to have a statin medication. And that's simply not true. Furthermore, Dr. Mahaltra adds, the term statin denier is a defamatory description. It's neither accurate and it is held out as a fact when it, when it is clearly mere unsus, uns, unsubstantiated opinion. I do not doubt that statins have a benefit, and that is clear from all of my journal publications and lectures. I also believe my colleagues, Dr. Kendrick and Dr. Harcum, have a similar position to me. So in the right circumstance, they use it, and they know the veracity of using a drug like that. The problem is statins are being handed out to patients like Tic Tacs, and so what they're probably doing, and it's getting the angst of the pharmaceutical companies that are behind the mail, uh, the Daily Mail in the UK, they're mad that they would even say anything about, oh, how, how dare you slow down our statin gravy train. Another uh, line in the article in the Daily Mail, Dr. Asim Mahaltra claimed at a medical event in 2017 that side effects of these drugs have not been properly investigated patients are now guinea pigs and they don't even know it. Indeed, he has made more extravagant claims, claiming that 75% of people prescribed a statin quit within a year, two-thirds of them as a result of the side effects. So that was in the Daily Mail story. So Dr. Mahalcher responds to that. This paragraph is both false and misleading. In particular, the articles reveal a lack of competent research uh, on their part, in particular, the rather shocking claim made by the article that mentions that I made a extravagant claim that 75% of patients prescribed a statin quit within a year, two-thirds of whom did so because of side effects, is plainly inaccurate and incorrect. The figure of 75% is not a claim. It is, in fact, entirely accurate. So they're they're trying to make it look like Dr. Mahaltra is exaggerating some kind of statistic, but the statistic holds true. 75%, three out of four people don't take a statin medication anymore. And two-thirds of them, their reason for it was the vast majority of those 75%. Um, the reason for it is all of the um, joint pain and the muscle aches and all the things that tend to come as a side effect of taking statins. Those of you that have taken statins, I've been on both Lipitor and Crestor before I found low-carb keto. 
Um, and I took those drugs and I had debilitating pain, you guys. I was in my early 30s, late 20s, early 30s when I was taking these meds because I thought cholesterol was a grand enemy in my health. I don't care anymore, by the way. Um, and they were killing me, like from the inside. It was horrible. And so we now know that a lot of people, they start taking the statin, but then they stop taking it. And all he was doing was citing that, um, that statistic. The second part of this phrase uh, quotes me as saying that in reference to statins, patients are guinea pigs and they don't even know it. This comment was in relation to poor regulation and the approval of medical devices, which is very clear in the lecture. So they quoted Dr. Mahaltra out of context. They took something he said in his lecture. Yes, he did say patients are guinea pigs and they don't even know it, but he wasn't referring to statin drugs. He was referring to the approval of medical devices uh, at the British Cardiovascular Prevention Society annual conference as the keynote speaker in 2017. See, this is how these uh, this is how these journalists they get away with this. They said it, and people won't go to look. Where did he say it? What was the context of it? They just say, "Look, look what he said," and people buy into it. That's how these bad headlines they get away with them. Statements like these. Uh, contribute to the overall distortion and factual presentation of an article, which is very much an opinion piece at that point. Evidence of the keynote address in question is clearly available online. Furthermore, the article is inaccurate in stating that Dr. Harkum and I were invited to brief Deputy Leader of the Labor Party, Tom Watson. In fact, we were invited to brief the Secretary of State for Health, following which we gave talks alongside Tom Watson at, a, at an event on diabetes. There is a special place in hell. This is another uh, line that was in the Daily Mail. Special place in hell for the doctors who claim statins don't work. So that was the claim that they put out there about Asim Mahaltra, Zoe Harkum, and Malcolm Kindred. Asim says, this is exceptionally defamatory. While I would hope that readers realize this is purely the opinion of the person writing it, his name Barney Kalman, despite his lack of medical qualifications, education, or even clinical experience, clarification would be welcomed, especially as he says that, quote, debate should, must be at the heart of science, end quote. And yet he fails to understand or even, it seems, educate himself on the basics of Dr. Mahaltra's position on statins. Guys, they will lie about these people. And these are some of the leading voices of keto, low-carb diets, real food-based diets over in the UK. And you're, if you're just joining us, the UK newspaper Daily Mail has published misleading stories about key keto leaders. And one of those leaders is Dr. Mas M uh, Asim Mahaltra. He's a cardiologist over there. He, along with Dr. Zoe Harkum and Dr. Malcolm Kendrick, I know all three of these guys very well. Uh, I've had all of them on my podcast before, and I've met uh, all of them in person before at various conferences. And they are some of the leading voices over there in the UK. And apparently the Daily Mail is not having any of their talk about how statins are overprescribed which is the main point that they're trying to communicate. Dr. Mahaltra says, I have never claimed that statins don't work. My work has been peer-reviewed and has appeared for many years in respected professional health journals. Here is a selection of publications in respected peer-reviewed medical journals where I have specifically referred to both the benefits as well as the harm of taking statins. So he's got a whole list of them here. And I'm going to skip down, but he, he listed like six or seven different papers that he has his name on um, that shows that he's shown both the benefits and the detriments of taking a statin medication. These kind of perni pernicious lies have no place in our NHS. That was another line from the Daily Mail. The Secretary of State for Health was quoted as saying, these kind of pernicious lies have no place in our NHS. I was invited to meet this person. He supports my work. Only a few days earlier in Parliament, just prior to giving the keynote lecture in Parliament at that same event in 2017, 
This lecture on the science of reversing type 2 diabetes is on YouTube. So those of you watching this on replay on YouTube, go look up Asim Mahaltra uh, and his uh, keynote speech about type 2 diabetes. Um, I can definitely put it into the notes down there if you're watching this on YouTube so that you can see that video and see exactly where um, Matt Hancock, the Secretary of State for Health, showed support for Asim Mahaltra. Uh, Dr. Mahaltra says, I've been in touch with Matt Hancock since publication of these articles. It is telling that he was just as surprised at the malicious content of the article. After they were published, he confirmed to me that he had no idea that this story, story would link to me. By implication, I have good reason to wonder if indeed he ever made the comments to begin with. My meeting that took place a few days before the MOS article with him was very well publicized on Twitter. In fact, he retweeted my tweet with our photograph together on our meeting uh, where the caption was, Honored to be invited to meet the Secretary of State for Health at Mac Matt Hancock yesterday. I explained we have an imbalance in NHS of too much medicine and not enough lifestyle intervention causing misery to millions he understands and wants to help fix our broken system, hashtag obesity. So, once again, they're trying to have conjecture and lies to make their point in the Daily Mail. And Dr. Mahaltra is standing up for himself. And good for him. I don't think enough doctors do this kind of thing. Is there a reason that the journalist writing the piece did not inform the Secretary of State for Health that I was one of the so-called individuals putting lives at risk with pernici pernicious lies? Another line in there, thousands of patients refuse statins because of the deadly propaganda of the statin deniers. Dr. Mahaltra says this is once again defamatory and false because it suggests that I am directly putting lives at risk and that my research commentary and articles on the subject of statins amounts to deadly propaganda. There is no evidence whatsoever that thousands of patients are refusing statins because of anything that I have said or done. They did the same thing, you guys, in Australia. So Marianne Damasi, uh, who is a doctor, she's also a journalist there. She was a television journalist, and she did a whole story, you guys, uh, like a feature story on one of the big, big television stations there, and she exposed the lies being put out there about statin medications and how they're not really the be-all, end-all in curing your heart health that they've been made out to be. And they fired her. They canned her uh, because there was a group that raised a stink about it. And this is the kind of stuff, you guys, what they're doing to Dr. Mahaltra, what they did to Marianne Damasi, what they're doing behind the scenes to all these people that are speaking out all about why statins are probably overprescribed, why you probably need to cut the carbs in your diet, so forth and so on. All of these people are under attack, and hopefully this is kind of underscoring what's going on. Uh, ba, 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 ba. There's no evidence of what resulted in a reduced uptake. It could have been because of media articles uh, talking about why people don't take uh, statin drugs. Um, it could uh, be patients making an informed decision not to take the pill anymore. More importantly, mention of this is a distraction from the fact that we want patients to make informed choices about whether taking a statin is good for them or not by being aware of their absolute benefits and their potential harms. This is the thing that a lot of these statin pushers aren't telling you about. You, re you watch the Lipitor commercials, 40% uh, decrease in heart disease. Now, whoa, that sounds so big. But what that is, is 40% decrease is not the absolute change. It's the relative change from what it was to what the new one is. If you look at the absolute change, the absolute is like one little percentage point. But they make it look like 40% um, by doing the statistical game. And people aren't buying that game anymore. Why is that a bad thing? Why is that the fault of somebody like Dr. Asim Mahaltra or Dr. Zoe Harkum or Dr. Malcolm Kendrick or anybody else that calls out the lies that are put out there about statin medications. 
However, some medics, this is another uh, quote that was in the Daily Mail, dispute the benefits of statins and a few wrongly assert they cause serious and widespread damage to health. So Dr. Mahaltra says this is a simple distortion of the truth. Statins have undisputed and observed side effects that can and indeed do cause damage to health through interfering significantly in patients' quality of life. I remember interviewing this gentleman named Dr. Dwayne Gravelin. Uh, he went by Space Doc back in the day. He's uh, sadly passed away now. Um, but he got on a statin medication, and Dr. Dwayne Gravelin took the statin, and one month later, he had this condition called myosthenia gravis. I wrote about him in my book called Cholesterol Clarity, if you want to learn uh, more about his work, <clears throat> but he got myosthenia gravis where he his mind basically started tripping and he was only on a statin medication, Lipitor, for one month, one month, and it altered his brain to the point that it eventually debilitated him. He had to be in a wheelchair and it, and it killed him. Um, other people get lesser side effects of muscle aches and joint pain. Um, it, there's actually known side effects of an increased risk of diabetes, something like 20%, an increased risk of cancer, something like 8%. And here's the kicker, you guys. People take a statin medication as a means of preventing heart disease. One of the side effects of a statin medication is, surprise, surprise, an increased risk of heart disease. Now, how's that for irony of all ironies? How many people take a statin medication thinking it is saving them from having a heart attack or getting heart disease? And now we know it actually depletes the body of a key heart health element called CoQ10. So if you take a statin medication, it sucks the living daylights of CoQ10 out of your body. And if you don't have CoQ10, you are at risk for heart disease and a heart attack. And yet these drugs pull that key heart health element out of your body. It's disgusting. Have you ever heard that before? Has that ever been on your radar screen? Have you ever had a doctor tell you that if you're taking a statin, you better darn well be supplementing with CoQ10? I don't think so. My doctor never did. Statins have undisputed and observed side effects that can uh, and indeed do cause damage to health. They interfere with significantly in patients' quality of life. Uh, Sir Rory Collins, the co-director of Clinical Trial Service Unit at the University of Oxford, a lead statin researcher, filed a patent for a test that indicates livelihood of patients suffering significant muscle symptoms on statins in 2009. Uh, an investigation in 2016 revealed that this was being sold directly to consumers in the United States on a website it claimed 29% of statin users will suffer significant muscle symptoms, weakness, or cramps. 58% of patients on statins will stop the meds within a year because of that. So, it's true. It's true. And yet they want to make it look like he's the wackadoodle one. When Dr. Mahaltra is merely presenting fact. The problem is the Daily Mail and those that are behind them, they don't want to hear, you can't handle the truth, because the truth is staring them right in the face. Uh, Dr. Mahaltra says, my approach to medical treatment relies on the concept of informed patient choice. This means, don't you wish you had a doctor that believed this? This means I believe every patient that may potentially be prescribed statins needs to know about all the relevant information about whether statins will provide a benefit to them or not. This is basic and well-accepted prescribing philosophy across the medical profession. Sadly, it might be basic and well-accepted, Dr. Mahaltra, but unfortunately, most doctors are not taking the, the time to explain to their patients, oh yeah, you might get muscle aches and pains, you might get um, joint pain, you might get myosthenia gravis and die from it eventually. They're not saying that. You might have an increased risk of diabetes and cancer and heart disease. Have you ever had a doctor tell you before you went on some medication like a statin all of these side effects, potential side effects, and whether they are worth 
the benefit, potential benefit that you'll get, I would dare say most have not. Uh, so let me skip ahead because uh, I don't want to go too, too long here. There's definitely a lot that Dr. Mahaltra had in his article. Uh, bu -bu 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 -bu. So uh, Dr. Mahaltra talks about some of the work that he's been doing to try to educate patients. Uh, he had a book called The Piapi Diet. Um, and he covers uh, how to lose weight, feel great, drastically uh, reduce your risk of type 2 diabetes and heart disease. It got many endorsements from key leaders uh, in academics, doctors, dietitians, all across the board. Um, he's donated all personal royalties of the sales of this book to a children's charity. Um, so he's putting his money where his mouth is. He's not trying to make money off of uh, his statin denying, as they're calling it. He's using it to try to help with various uh, charitable organizations. So that's pretty cool. Um, so anyway, he concludes, I expect a full and complete apology. Yeah, good luck with that, Dr. Mahaltra. <laughs> to be given with exposure in both printed press and on the website to a similar degree as the original misleading comments. That is the right thing to do. If they got it wrong, admit you got it wrong, and then issue a, a, a retraction. Even better yet, let Asim Mahaltra, Zoe Harkum, and um, Malcolm Kendrick, let them all write an article that states their position clearly. That way there's no mistake about what they believe. The thing, and you guys see me talk about this a lot on Jimmy Rants. The thing that gets me the most is when there's such cond uh, condemnation um, that comes from the author of these articles. You can tell when they're highly biased against who and whatever they are talking about because they'll ju it just drips with it. It's just disgusting some of the ways that they write these articles. And it makes people, good people, look bad. And it's misleading to the reader. And I don't blame Dr. Mahaltra for writing this big, long letter to the editor of the Daily Mail that says, hey, look, we, uh, we expect a full and complete apology. And we need to have a retraction posted in the Daily Mail. This is only fair given the detriment um, that has willfully uh, come to my reputation and to my professional status as a respected medical doctor. And I expect that all of these articles in question will be removed from online publication. Remedial action may be taken in the form of significant alteration so as to remove references to me and my colleagues as statin deniers. So he's like, okay, leave the article up, but take our names out of it. And I don't blame him. It's defamation of their character. They're not saying things that are untrue. They're not saying things that are sensationalistic. They are saying things to try to help make their patients healthier. All right, so I'm going to end right there. There were a couple of supportive uh, letters from a couple of doctors, but we're going to run out of time if I don't get to you guys. But guys, the bottom line in this Jimmy Rants is they're coming after people that are in the keto world. In, in the UK, uh, there's only a few of them, and three of the biggest ones there, Dr. Asim Mahaltra, Dr. Zoe Harkom, and Dr. Malcolm Kendrick, all three of them promote low-carb, high-fat, ketogenic diets. All three of them uh, believe that patients need to be empowered with all the information about medications, the potentials ups and downs, um, and so because they don't fall in lockstep with conventional wisdom, they are targeted. And the UK newspaper Daily Mail has published misleading stories all about key keto leaders. Now, something you can do is write to the editors of the Daily Mail. And I'm going to give you their email address so that you can write to them let them know about your concerns. Uh, the editor on the, the Daily Mail on Sunday is Ted Verity, T-E-D, 
and his last name V E R I T Y. So it's Ted dot Verity, T E D dot V E R I T Y at mail on Sunday dot co dot uk. So Ted dot Verity at mail on Sunday dot co dot uk. You can write to him, express your concerns about what Dr. Mahaltra shared. They basically defamed his character, they defamed Zoe Harkum, and they defamed um, Malcolm Kendrick. And I don't think they deserve that simply because they have an alternative viewpoint. And guys, don't think this can't happen in America. We're seeing it happen over in Australia. I did a Jimmy Rants a few weeks back about Christine Crow now and how they pitched a big fit that she was promoting a low-carb, high-fat diet for, um, for health. And, of course, they focused in on some cancer comments that she said one time. And, and they try to make people that believe in this ketogenic way of living and way of eating uh, to be the wackos. And we know that there's a lot of great health benefits that come from being keto. And yet they want to try to portray all of these leaders as some kind of whacked. All right, I want to see what you guys have to say. We'll come to you here in a minute, Facebook. I'm going to go to Instagram Live first. Welcome in, welcome in. <sighs> Sounded better on Instagram. I don't know why. Well, I'm glad you're here. I hope my uh, Facebookers can hear me just fine over there. D-Bay says, not only are they under attack, but they are being killed, possibly having their office burned down. The success of keto is shutting down Profits of Big Pharma and plant-based doctors. Uh, God forbid you should speak out against the useless prescription of statins, says d -Base. Well, I don't know that it's useless in all instances, but certainly they are over-prescribing statin medications. Um, I, I don't think most people that are taking a statin medication necessarily needs to be on them. I think they're they're too quick to pull the trigger on putting people on a statin rather than asking the question. And I asked this question in my book, Cholesterol Clarity. By the way, if you want to get my book, Cholesterol Clarity, cholesterolclarity.com, it's in a hardback paper book, um, it's in Kindle, and then I also read the audio book to it. So if you want to read Cholesterol Clarity, What the HDL is Wrong with My Numbers, uh, go check that out. It's on Amazon, cholesterolclarity.com. Uh, so much muscle pain, says Val uh, Brenneman. Yeah, but the mainstream medicine, they don't ever ask, why is your cholesterol higher? They just see that it's higher. Oh, we got to get that down, and here's statin. And so when you stop to think about why cholesterol is higher, you start to learn things that... Cholesterol is higher for a good reason in your body. They never want to talk about the good reasons why cholesterol might be higher in your body. And there are lots and lots of good reasons. If you have inflammation going on in your body, and I'll give you an example in my life. When I was in my early 20s, I had root canals done from all those years that I used to chew hard candy as a kid, and I would leave the, the candy in my teeth. Before long, that started rotting out my teeth. And in my early 20s, like 2021, I needed to get lots of dental work done. So I ended up getting four root canals done. I also had in some mercury amalgams put in. Well, when I was uh, writing my book, Cholesterol Clarity, back in 2012, 2013, I interviewed this dentist, holistic dentist in Australia. And he said, did you know your cholesterol can be higher if you've had... Uh, dental work and you now have like infections. I'm like, I've had four root canals and I have mercury amalgams. He said, what's your cholesterol? And at the time it was like 350. He's like, dude, get that cleaned up. So I got my teeth cleaned up, got the four root canals, uh, all the infections cleaned up. I got the mercury amalgams all uh, fixed with really good stuff. That was very expensive to get all that cleaned. But Within six months, my cholesterol dropped 100 points. No statin medication necessary. So for us to pretend like cholesterol is an enemy, when cholesterol is doing lots of good things in our body, we need to rethink this. 
And so I think it's great we've got doctors speaking out, saying, hey, slow our roll on prescribing statins when we don't really know the reason why someone has high cholesterol. CDOC says the number of patients benefiting from statins shrinks every day as more people get a heart calcium score testing uh, and become keto. It's all about big pharma trying to manipulate doctors' prescription pads. Um, and he's right. Uh, there's this thing called numbers needed to treat, NNT. And the numbers needed to treat, you know how many people have to be on a statin medication for one person to get benefit? This is going to shock you. This stat blew me away the first time I ever heard it. The number needed to treat on statin medications is one out of every 100. That's right. It takes 100 people taking a statin medication for one person to get a benefit. Did you know that? Did you know that you have a 99% chance of that statin drug not doing a darn good thing for you, but you have a much, much higher chance that it's going to do some bad for you in terms of muscle aches, pain, and all the side effects that come from this? Nobody ever tells you that when you go on a statin medication, that are you going to be that lucky one that sees some kind of a benefit from the statin, or are you going to be in the unlucky 99% those poor people having to suffer taking this drug that's not really giving them any benefit at all. That should be a sobering statistic for most of you, and if you're taking a statin, maybe make you rethink why you're taking it. Watching and learning, says Glenn. Well, I'm glad you're here, Glenn. I hate when people put things out of context. Information gets so distorted. Will Sue be uh, in journalism? Apparently, that is a fine art. Because I see it so often, we talk about it here on Jimmy Rants, all of the ways that they try to distort information, um, it's all the time they're doing that. And sadly, um, people have to read through it. It's one reason I translate so many of that nonsense uh, here on Jimmy Rants is sometimes you don't always recognize it um, when they're trying to do that. But I'll always try to keep it straight for you. I stopped a podcast to watch you. Well, thank you, uh, Benazadi. I, I appreciate you being here. I don't usually do them this late at night, um, but I uh, I had some errands to do this afternoon, and I needed to get in this one. I promised Dr. Mahaltra I would try to get this out on video. Uh, it's so ironic. More people die from heart disease with normal to low cholesterol than high cholesterol. You are right, um, and more people that are admitted, here's another statistic that's going to blow your mind. If you thought the one out of every 100 uh, get benefit from statin uh, statistic was big, listen to this. They did a study, you guys. I put all of this in uh, cholesterol clarity, by the way. They did a study of patients who were admitted to the hospital with some kind of heart health uh, incident. So they had a heart attack. They had angina, which is chest pain. Um, they had some kind of heart health kind of concern that forced them to go into the emergency room. So of those patients who got into there, um, those who had cholesterol levels in the normal range, which was 200 or below, was 75% of those people. In other words, they're trying to tell us that 200 or below is the magic number to prevent having a cardiovascular event. Whereas three-fourths of the people that were in that study that they conducted at this one uh, hospital, um, three-fourths of them had normal cholesterol. How did that happen if cholesterol is the enemy and higher cholesterol is the reason you have heart disease and the reason you have a heart attack why was three out of four of those people who had those things happen in the normal, quote, healthy range? Hmm. The Hippocratic Oath says, do no harm, says C-Doc. Still means something to me and these fine doctors. Statins have serious side effects and need to be fully disclosed to patients before starting it. Big Pharma lies. Yes. I think if a patient wants to consider taking a statin medication, 
a doctor should be able to articulate, you know what, you can take this medication, there's about one person out of every 100 that's going to get benefit out of this according to the numbers needed to treat. We know this very well. We also know very well that there are certain side effects that you will possibly encounter. A good number of people that go on a statin medication, they get muscle aches, they get pain in their joints. Um, so just an FYI, this may or may not provide any benefit to you, but it has a higher chance of giving you detriment than it does giving you benefit. So let the patient then decide. Some patients will be like, okay, let me take the pill. I'll take my chance. And, and then others will be like, why would I do that? What are my other alternatives? And that's what opens the door to talking about nutrition uh, if the doctor understands nutrition. Val says, my best friend's doctor did take, uh, tell her to take the CoQ10. She did not take the statin anymore, though. It's eye-opening, isn't it? Uh, Benazadi says, it's not even about pro-statin or anti-statin. It's about providing facts to the patient so that they can make an informed decision. That is the key. Thank you for articulating that. But that is the main point. Why don't we give patients all of the information and then let them make an educated decision for themselves? I think we forget that as adults, we have the right to make our own decisions. And as adults, we have the confidence and the ability to assimilate information and come to some logical conclusion about what's right. And unfortunately, there are certain people that don't want you as an adult to be able to have that right to say that. Uh, did you ever detox your brain from the mercury that vaporized from the silver filling? So when they removed it, um, these guys were at a holistic dentist and they were in hazmat suits. So they were like, <laughs> it was, it was wicked because I was surrounded by all these people in hazmat suits. But then they protected me uh, by having this covering over my face and everything so I wouldn't suck in the vapors. And they got it all out of there. So it was, that's why it was so expensive. They had to spend all that extra money on protecting me from exposure. Um, so no, I didn't do any kind of chelation therapy or anything like that. But none of that has actually shown up on any uh, heavy metal tests or anything like that. So I think I'm okay. But thanks for asking. Flossing has been shown to improve cardiac health. Yeah, I don't think people realize the role their teeth plays in their heart health. Look it up, you guys. Just do a Google search. Uh, teeth health, heart health. It's going to blow your mind. I remember Beverly Meyer saying on her podcast to get the mercury amalgams removed. My dentist wouldn't even discuss it with me. Well, yellow-eyed one, you're probably okay that your dentist, your traditional dentist, didn't. You really need to go to a holistic dentist. They're the ones that can protect you from being exposed to that. Unfortunately, once the mercury is in there, um, it's highly, highly dangerous to have it removed unless people know what they're doing. My dentist said, oh, there's nothing wrong with mercury amalgams. I'm like, <laughs> yes, there is. I've been refusing statins for years. I know the doctor thinks I'm non-compliant, and I am proudly so, <laughs> says yellow-eyed, so... All right, let me pop over to Facebook. Thank you guys for being so patient as I go over all the Instagram Live comments. I'm going to scroll all the way back to the top. Thanks for being here. Welcome in, welcome in. Hello, Jimmy. Saw this last week. Glad you're talking about it. People need to hear the truth. Yes, Sue. Uh, again, if you joined late, Dr. Mas Asim Mahaltra wrote this really great post on Facebook. It was a letter to the editor of the Daily Mail. Or again, as the UK, my UK friends call it, the Daily Rag, uh, because it's like the National Enquirer over there. But it's highly influential. That's the problem. And uh, they wrote a couple of defamatory type of articles claiming that Dr. Asim Mahaltra, a cardiologist, uh, Zoe Harkum, Dr. Zoe Harkum, Harkum and then Dr. Uh, Malcolm Kendrick, all three of them are, quote, statin deniers, and they defame their character. And so they're pushing back. And I'm giving you guys an opportunity on this Jimmy Rants here today to push back as well. Again, the editor of the Mail, uh, the Daily Mail on Sunday is Ted Verity, V-E-R-I-T-Y, 
ted.verity at mailonsunday.co.uk if you want to write to him and express your concern that they would publish these kind of things that are, let's just face it, they're lies about good people. And all three of these guys are low-carb, high-fat, ketogenic um, people over there in the UK. So um, I don't think that's by accident either, just FYI. Uh, bu- 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 bu. Thanks for being here, you guys. Lots of people here on Facebook. I got my mom your book. She stopped taking the statin medication that they had her on. Thank you, Bonnie. Um, my neighbor uh, that lived across the street at the time when I came out with Cholesterol Clarity, she was on a statin medication, and I gave her a copy of Cholesterol Clarity. She read it, uh, and she went to her doctor, and I and she said... I read this book by my neighbor. He's Jimmy Moore. You need to look him up. Uh, He makes a lot of sense when it comes to these statins. I don't want to take these statins anymore. The doctor had told her that the muscle aches and pains were because of her weight. The doctor never, ever explained that those aches and pains that she started having when she took a statin drug was from the statin itself. And to me, that's egregious. To me, that's disgusting. Again, blaming the patient for what the medication was doing. This is why this stuff's important. It's why you see me talk about it so, so often. I've always depended on my pharmacist to tell me about a prescription. Doctor never informed. Currently prescription medication free, keeping on. Well, Catharos, good job on that. I was on three prescription medications back when I first started on the low-carb diet high cholesterol. So I was on Crestor at the time when I started Atkins diet in 2004. I was also on high blood pressure med. I don't remember which one. And then I was also on Advair, which is a breathing, uh, you suck in this powder stuff into your lungs because I was wheezing. And so I was on all three of those meds and was able to come off of all three in 2004, thanks to a low carb diet. And I've never taken another prescription med since. So guys, the bottom line in this Jimmy Rants, the UK newspaper Daily Mail, but they're not the only ones. It's happening all over the world. They're publishing, let's just face it, lies, defamation, um, mischaracterizations. They're being dishonest. And I think people need to know that. They need to know that the journalists at these different publications don't have your best interest in mind. They have salacious headlines in mind. Because again, look at the headlines they did. Statin deniers are putting patients at risk. There's a special place in hell for those doctors who claim that statins don't work. This is the kind of stuff that they know gets eyeballs and they know gets attention. But I'm very happy to hear Dr. Asim Mahaltra, Dr. Zoe Harkham, and Dr. Malcolm Kendrick pushing back. Pushing back, not not putting up with it. And these guys all believe in nutrition and real whole foods as the means for getting healthy. And I think we need to support them. I think we need to make our voices heard collectively. Uh, And I think the Daily Mail needs to hear from us. So again, if you want to write to Ted Verity, he's the editor at The Mail on Sunday. His email address, ted.verity, T-E-D dot V-E-R-I-T-Y at mailonsunday.co.uk. Can you imagine if hundreds of people wrote in and demanded that they make this right, demanded that they allow a story to be written that shares the truth, Better yet, how about an op-ed piece from Asim Mahaltra? The man is a very gifted speaker, very talented writer. Let Asim, who is a very highly respected medical doctor, cardiologist there in the UK, let him write the story. He's very well known in uh, the British media. He's all over the media. A good-looking guy, and he's out there, very articulate, and he speaks truth, you guys. And he's a low-carb keto guy. And he just happens to think that we shouldn't have every single patient on a statin medication. And to me, that's not a bad thing. 
Why is he being vilified for being intelligent and trying to help his patients truly get healthy? That's it for this episode of Jimmy Rants. JimmyRants.com is the website. As always, you can engage live in the content, but you got to go follow me over on Instagram. That's those, these guys right here. I'm at Living Low Carb Man on Instagram, L I V I N L O W C A R B M A N. Once you're there, you can engage live in the content. We also simulcast over here on Facebook Live. Stick around Facebook Live for the after party coming right up. If you missed the live on Instagram, you can watch it for up to 24 hours on Instagram on replay. After that, it does disappear. You'll need to see all the past episodes over on YouTube. Type in a keyword search, Jimmy Rants. You'll find the show or youtube.com slash live in low carb band. Finally, the best of the best moments of this year's show are in podcast form. It's the Jimmy Rants podcast on Apple Podcasts as well as Stitcher. All of these links, you guys, are at Jimmy Rants. Dot com. So until next time, we'll see you then. And we're out over on Instagram. Let me turn that really super duper bright light off. As it gets darker outside, that gets brighter. <laughs> so thanks for being here, you guys. I never do this late, in, late at night. Um, and like I said before, I am a night uh, sleeper. In, in terms of I go to bed like really early at night. So for me to do a Jimmy Rants this late, um, I'm surprised I was awake as I was because usually about 8, 8.30 I start to go. <sighs> but I had to go to Lowe's today. Uh, this afternoon we uh, have a chicken coop back there with our 25 backyard chickens and in front of the coop, it's getting really muddy. We've had a whole lot of rain over the past year, and especially lately here in 2019. Um, so all it's sloped downward towards the coop. And so right there is where a lot of water tends to build up. Well, it's been very muddy, muddy out there. So when we go to kind of get the eggs or to clean the coop, it's kind of slip and slide. And so... Christine is like, can you like pour some concrete there? So I went and bought 64 of those bags of quickcrete so that I could uh, really concrete the heck out of that area. Um, what was funny was at Lowe's, when I bought the 64 bags, I started loading it up on the cart to take it to my car. Had to make two trips because it was so many bags. And the 21-year-old kid, I was throwing about eight bags for every one that he did. I was running circles around him. And he wasn't, like, uh, unhealthy. He was pretty stout, uh, healthy kid. I was surprised. I'm like, uh, I'm 47 years old, and you're 21. How in the world am I, am I outperforming you here? But anyway, maybe he'll grow up. So, yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Um, real excited that I got this one in here today. I wanted people to hear about this because um, this is an important story. Definitely uh, look up Asim Mahaltra here on uh, Facebook. He does a lot of really good posts. Uh, his spe spelling of his name is A-S-E-E-M. That's his first name. Last name M-A-L-H-O-T-R-A. Um, and you probably will find this over there uh, on his page. But important information, we need to remain vigilant. I will keep you abreast of what's happening. Obviously, if they issue a retraction or if they uh, allow a guest post to come in from uh, Dr. Mahaltra, we'll read it here on Jimmy Rants because I think that would be beautiful uh, as a follow-up to this one here, Kimberly says, rest well. Kimberly, I always rest really, really well. Um, that is one of the coolest parts of my um, of my kind of circadian rhythm is I go to sleep at 8, 8.30. I'm up wide awake in the mornings, typically around like 4, 4.30. Um, lately, though, my body's been telling me to have a little more rest. So yesterday, I think I was up at 5.30. Today I was up at 5.40, so um, yeah, I always listen to my body. I don't try to force myself to get up 
at any particular time, but I definitely try to get to sleep somewhere between like 8 and 9 p.m. So that's right now. <laughs> All right, guys, I'm going to pop off of here. Thanks so much for joining me on this Jimmy Rants and uh, being here for the melancholy after party. Um, really appreciate it. What do I have coming up? Uh, I am here the rest of this week and then all of next week until Saturday next week. Next Saturday, Christine and I will be getting on an airplane going to Italy. Um, our friend Maria Emmerich, yes, that Maria Emmerich, uh, has put together this trip of keto people uh, who wanted to do a trip uh, across Italy. And Christine and I, Christine has always wanted to go to Italy because she has family that lives uh, or is from Italy. I think her grandmother was full um, Italian. So we're going to get to go to Italy and spend it with Maria freaking Emmerich. So that's pretty cool. Um, and when we get back from that, we go with some friends out to the beach for a week. And then we're home for about a week and a half after that. Then is the low-carb cruise. Uh, and then Christine and I will be in the Washington, D.C. area, kind of hanging out before her brother uh, has a cabin in, in Northern Virginia. And we'll be there. So it's a busy, busy kind of time coming up the next couple of months. So to that end, in the months of May and June... I will not be having uh, any of my podcasts except for uh, Jimmy Rants, uh, or excuse me, um, Living La Vida Low Carb Show. Um, I may try to sneak in Jimmy Rants when I can, but I can't promise I'll do two a day during all of that time because uh, unfortunately, if I'm vacationing in Italy, I'm going to enjoy Italy. <laughs> so you guys have plenty of backlist to keep you occupied while I'm not here, but... Thanks for being here, guys. We'll talk at you again tomorrow. Bye.